Ceiling balance is associated with giving or lifting the ambient light in your set. And if you're wondering what ambient light is, walk into any room, your bedroom, your kitchen, with everything turned off, what is the light doing? Is it bright? Like we talked about, is the window coming through? And if you are framing up and you want a, a quick way to lift the ambient light, just a way to raise everything up. Imagine you're in color and you just turn a knob and it makes it brighter, but you wanna do that on set, obviously. So a quick way to do that would be ceiling bouncing. Ceiling bounce can be done with anything. Our favorite lights to do it with, if you're trying to lift the ambient in tungsten, using a Source 4 Leco and literally hit the ceiling. You can see the shape it makes on the ceiling. And it's sort of a bounce, you know? Imagine what a fill is doing when you bring it in closer. That is a white card that is basically taking light and sending it back. Well, think of a ceiling as a giant white card or white piece of diffusion. So, you know, when you hit a light on it, even though you didn't rent the ceiling, it's white and it's gonna give you similar return to what a fill card would do. Uh, this does work best when your ceiling is white. You know, I've been in areas where if you have a wood ceiling or it's painted green, it's gonna send that color back down. This is more of a quick and dirty way of achieving what a softbox or a top light would do. With the ceiling bounce, I find it works best when it's subtle. I'd never make this my key light or predominant light source in my scene, but simply to bring everything up a few points. Just think about being in post-production, right? And just cranking the brightness knob up. That's essentially what a ceiling bounce does. I think the times where ceiling bounces save me is you know when you sort of get those notes from client or the label, hey, this looks too dark. In earlier lessons, we've talked about bringing in fill to sort of uh, reduce the contrast ratio. So basically by ceiling bouncing, you're kind of a, you're globally affecting the fill of everything. Not only is there gonna be light hitting the fill side, but kind of everywhere on the set. So if you feel like all your values are feeling pretty good and you and the director are like, yeah, this is perfect, but you have that commissioner or that label who doesn't really understand cinematography, they only just understand bright or dark, the easy way to speak to maybe some of their notes is just a quick ceiling bounce above the set. You know, if you got a white ceiling, throw a unit up there, within a couple minutes, you can easily just bring the values to where, you know, you're not gonna get fired. Another way I love to use ceiling bounce is when I'm lighting night scenes. The misconception of lighting and shooting a night scene is that you light it with minimal lights so it feels dark. But this becomes tricky because if you end up lighting the scene too dark, it can lead to underexposed shadows and a lot of noise. My favorite tip for lighting a scene that is supposed to look and feel dark is to use a ceiling bounce. I will bounce a light into a white ceiling or a white bounce above the set to send a subtle amount of light into the shadows. Because if you look at some of your favorite movies that are dark night scenes, they are lit in a way that still feels bright enough to see what's going on, but also still dark enough to feel like a night scene. Most of these movies though will build an elaborate softbox over a lot of their sets, and I find that a ceiling bounce will actually give you the same effect. I like to call this movie dark because this is how most movies approach lighting their night scenes. The best way to explain movie dark is basically dealing with your shadows, right? You're dealing with a dark scene by nature. It's gonna be dark, it's gonna be moody. You're dealing with stuff that's on the lower end of the spectrum, your shadows. The other end of the spectrum would be your highlights or the brighter parts of your image. But when you're dealing with movie dark, you're dealing with that lower toe of information. If you're looking at false color, if you're looking at a histogram, this is like the low, 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 the, the, the shadows, right? If you step onto a set, and there's no lights on, chances are everything's gonna be underexposed, clipped out black. So your goal of movie dark is just to raise the shadows just to the point where the camera can see them. Once the camera can see into those shadows and there's information in those shadows, you are good to go. Because now it can feel dark. Now you can have actors, your subject, your scene, everything can happen in this lower toe as long as the camera can see it. You know, your camera doesn't have night vision. So you may walk into a set and your eye, maybe it seems bright, but pull out your light meter, pull out your false color. Your goal of movie dark is to get your values in the shadows just above purple, which is underexposed, to a level where it's, it can be seen. And here is a ceiling bounce being used. When you look at the before and after, you can see the difference a ceiling bounce makes on the false color overlay. The shadows are no longer underexposed or purple because there's light being bounced from above filling in those shadows. A quick tip when you're using a ceiling bounce for lighting a darker scene is to set the Kelvin of the ceiling bounce to 6500 Kelvin. Because in most instances, when I shoot night scenes, I set my camera to 4500 Kelvin. 
And this will do two things. First, it will make all of your 3200 Kelvin lamps appear warmer. And secondly, it'll make all of your 5600 Kelvin to 6500 Kelvin sources feel cooler. And that's the secret. I love when I can use a ceiling bounce to cool off my shadows. Not only do I feel like this is a great way to lift my shadows out of that underexposure and sort of false color that we talked about earlier, but it's a great way to have it appear like moonlight or whatever you might be motivating for your scene has sort of crept into the shadows. And that's your job as a cinematographer. You know, there's, there's elements of the story that are important and that need to be seen by the viewer. And if it's happening in underexposed, you know, grainy and noisy shadows, well then you're, you know, doing a disservice to the project. So, you know, movie dark and ceiling bounce, these are all ways that you can, you know, elevate and lift your shadows in a cinematic way to where it doesn't feel overlit, but it's lit enough to where the viewer and everyone can see what's going on.